there are a total of 17 different machine shop tips on the subject of the Atlas lathe. So take a look at these and this is your, your little directory to help you find them starting at 220 and all the way up to 236. Be sure and watch them all. Howdy once again this is Tubal Kane and today with machine shop tips number 236 which is entitled the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe headstocks. So let me talk somewhat about the headstock and this will be toward the end of this series and this there's, there's already 16 videos so be sure and watch them but let's talk about the headstock which is really the working end of the Atlas lathe. I'm only going to discuss the headstock itself here rather than uh, including the jack shaft and the drive system and the motor and all of that back there because most of that's self-evident so I'm not going to uh, deal with that at all. Now the headstock is made of cast iron and it's uh, heavily built. It is aligned with the bed and the ways uh, the same way the tailstock is by being clamped between them and located in that manner so it's directly in line with the tailstock. This is the spindle. The spindle has a hole that goes all the way through and the thread right here is, <coughs> pardon me, a one and a half eight thread. And that's pretty much common with these smaller lathes such as South Bend and Logan although they also make a spindle that's larger to accommodate uh, the 5C collets. This will only handle 3C collets which are relatively small. So the hole going through here is a number three more taper at the start and then we normally use a sleeve such as this. That's a two to three more taper sleeve and then we use a number two center. Looking at the headstock from this end, a view you're familiar with from some of the other videos, and make sure you unplug your machine when you uh, have the guard open. Uh, in review it's a one and a half eight thread, uh, number three more taper from the other side, and the bore here is 25 30 seconds, and that's a very limiting factor on these small lathes. This is a piece of three quarter inch stock, so you can see that three quarter is about the biggest that you're going to be able to run through the spindle. You're looking at the uh, rear of the tailstock on my South Bend 10 inch heavy and it will handle uh, 5C collets and the threaded spindle is uh, two and a quarter diameter. But notice the much larger hole we have here. In fact, that's inch and a quarter uh, steel that I've got in there and it would take uh, a bar even a little bit larger than that. So this is a nice feature that you're not going to find that on an Atlas lathes. The spindle on this Atlas lathe rides on Timpkin tapered roller bearings, but you might find some older Atlas lathes that use Babbitt type uh, bearings, friction bearings. Notice the gear setup, which I'm going to talk about. Now I just recently replaced the V-belt on this lathe, which was just a, a standard belt. And uh, it had taken a set, and it's got some bad spots that vibrated uh, greatly. It's the original Atlas belt, so that might be over 50 years old. So I put on one of these link belts that are advertised as vibration free, and it seems to run a lot smoother with this uh, link belt, and they cost about $15, and you can uh, buy them in a three foot length, and then I had to remove about three links to make that fit, and it's just nice. And the beauty of these is you do not have to take the spindle apart and this jack shaft apart to change belts. And that is a full day's job, so you want to avoid that. So I think this is a good thing, these, these link belts, and they seem to drive just fine. This is a picture from the Atlas Craftsman manual showing uh, how the spindle is constructed with the two tapered bearings. Timpkin, you know. This is, of course, the lever to release the belt tension. Like that. And we've got four steps in the V-pulley. One, two, three, four. And uh, when you use your back gears, <coughs> you have a total of eight speeds. 
as shown up here in my hand uh, drawn chart but you will double that or have 16 speeds if you change the uh, belt here from this large pulley to the uh, to the smaller one so 16 speeds in all I talked about uh, this gear train here in great detail earlier but this final gear here on the end of the spindle is the uh, gear that transmits the power down through the other uh, gear train here through the gearbox and into the lead screw that's a Zamac gear there is one adjustment on the bearings and hopefully you'll never need to use it but uh, if you develop any kind of end play here when we don't want any end play we can take that up by loosening the screw in this little collar here let me move the camera around to the other side there's a collar here that is threaded and it's a very fine thread underneath there and if you loosen this set screw here you are able to uh, tighten or loosen this and just a small fraction of a turn will take up that uh, that end play if you have any so that's how to make that adjustment this uh, threaded spindle will accommodate many different kinds of chucks and work holding devices and this is my atlas chuck I have several of them and I got four jaw chucks and face plates and uh, a Jacobs chuck that fits on here be very careful to protect this thread should you damage this thread in any way you really have uh, ruined the lathe because you're not going to be able to afford to, to find a new or buy a new spindle to put in there so protect that and when you're using um, your collar detachment make sure you screw one of those thread protectors on there and that's the purpose of that so you can't bump the tool or anything else up against uh, these threads and these are hardened keep them clean keep the threads in your chuck clean and one or two drops of oil on there will suffice because sometimes when you put a chuck on you're not sure but you might have it on there for 10 years and if there isn't a little oil in there it may be very troublesome to get off on these older atlas lathes we have uh, back gears that are literally are back here but on the more modern ones the so-called back gears are below uh, the spindle but the uh, action here is the same now you can engage the back gears this is the bullpen these are the back gears with uh, this lever here it's on an eccentric so now the uh, the back gears are uh, engaged and sometimes we engage them like that in order to lock the spindle so that we can remove the the chuck now you got to be very careful because these gears are Zamac and if you damage them or break a tooth off you're probably going to have to uh, uh, sell the lathe or, or junk the lathe but to, what can damage them and I've seen a lot of them damaged and there's no way to repair them is when people remove the chuck sometimes they use a very large crescent wrench like this and they put it on the jaws and then they beat on it relentlessly with a large hammer and that can very easily knock a tooth out of the gear there's a bullpen and you need to rotate the spindle until you find it and there it is and it's in the inner position right now and I'm going to pull it out sometimes you need both fingers you're going to pull it out and the bull pin locks the bull gear onto the pulleys and the spindle. So now you can see that this is turning separately from the, uh, the pulley. So in order to use the back gears, you must pull the pin, as I just showed you, and then you can engage the gears. And now the entire uh, power will be transferred through the gears. Let me reposition the... Uh, camera and show you in order to re-engage the bullpen all you need to do is to push on the pin and then rotate either the chuck you feel go in and there's a couple different holes that, that uh, you can fit that into or push on it as you're turning the belt you feel it go in and you'll feel it click do not Put your fingers in there when it's running or coasting to a stop or attempt to push this in as it's coasting to a stop. It should be 
at a complete standstill for safety. With the back ears engaged, we have about a 6 to 1 ratio. It's like putting a car in low gear. It will slow it way down and increase the power. So watch this as I turn it on. You can see that the power is transmitted back through this shaft and back into the spindle and that slows it way down. So in back gears, for instance, with this step here, and I'm not going to talk much about speeds, but if it was in direct drive, it would be at 266 RPM, but in back gears, on that pulley step, it's at 45 RPM. So that's the purpose of the back gears, to slow it down, increase the power, and to uh, uh, also use the back gear to lock the spindle. Well, it's got a dual use. The Atlas manual recommends that you do not use back gears with this belt in uh, the other position here because it'll be running too fast for the back gears and could damage them or cause rapid wear. There are several very important oilers here on the headstock. The two most important, of course, are the main bearings here. So using this git oiler and this git oiler, uh, lubricate from time to time, and there is a wick in there that will hold the oil. Back here, on the back gears, there's a small set screw. Remove that, put a few drops of oil in it, and put the screw back in. And same thing right here. Remove this screw periodically without dropping it, and that won't be easy. You'll never find it if you drop it. Might help to put a magnet on the uh, screwdriver and a couple drops of oil right in there. The purpose of that is to lubricate that shaft and bearing in there that uh, allows this to free wheel. This type of screw startner, starter is very useful to get your screw back in there. The Atlas lathe has an indexing device around the bull gear. There are 60 holes, which will allow you do, to do some spacing. And right here there's a, a pin that slides back and forth and can be engaged into any one of the holes. And you might need to mark them for depending on what you're doing. And do not use this as a lock to attempt to take the chuck off. You will break the tip off of it instantly. But according to the manual, uh, the purpose of the indexing mechanism is to allow you to do some uh, operations such as fluting and reading and serrating and sprocket and spoke spacing. So consider that for some of your operations. It also might be real good to do certain types of uh, layout and dividing. As I conclude this series of videos, uh, 16 of them on the Craftsman Atlas Lay that you've been watching. Let me just remind you that I have 40 others on the same subject and these are all available on my website or I run specials from time to time uh, on uh, my channel that you, you can watch for but these are for pay but there's a total of 11 hours of video here and these are just uh, the different operations on a lathe which aren't included in the series that I just finished but if you would like to uh, pause your video you can read through all the different titles here of the chapters and the, the times how long they are 40 chapters in all and those are sold on a flash drive, not a DVD that can be played on your computer. Reminder that they're all made in the USA. Again, there's the website. And that concludes this video on the headstock of the Atlas lathe. Take good care of it and it will serve you well. Hope you enjoyed this long series on the Atlas lathe and this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.